was off. All right, so away we go. Yesterday was the start of understanding how very important knowing what's going on in the 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 triangles is. And today is going to be about how about this unit circle thing? You know, you walk out of my room and the unit circle is on the wall up there. What is that all about? And what I'm going to do first, because this book kind of skips over it, is talk to you about where they came up with this whole cosine theta, sine theta as an ordered pair. You know, why are they talking about that as cosine and sine theta? as a point on the unit circle. Well, the unit circle has a radius of one. That's what makes it special. So when we form a triangle in the unit circle, what that does, oh, that might help. Is there anything else that was gone yesterday? In one of our new little, very little note packets. <coughs> Mm -hmm. So here's how it works. This is the radius. It's going to be a 1. And we have sides on this triangle that we want to know about as they relate to that angle theta. <coughs> and this one is the opposite side. And this one is the adjacent side. So when I do get my ordered pair, this is my x, and this is my y. So I think, OK, well, how does that connect with cosine and sine? Well, cosine, remember, is always adjacent over hypotenuse. But if the radius is always 1, it's just going to be the adjacent side. And that is x. That's the x coordinate that we need. And with sine, if we have theta over here, and this is opposite, the sine of theta equals opposite over 1. Well, over 1 isn't going to do anything. So the sine of theta is just the opposite side, and that's my y value right there. So that's one of the things that makes the unit circle really special and easy to work with, you know, is, is the fact that the radius is 1 making our sine and cosine the x and the y, but it respectively would be cosine for x and then sine for y. And that's one of the big deals about the unit circle. There's plenty of them, but we're going to talk about a lot of good stuff with that unit circle today, and I think we're right here. So, got here, kind of ran out of time. The unit circle has a radius of one unit centered at the origin of the coordinate plane. Points on the unit circle are related to periodic functions. And yesterday I just talked briefly about how sine and cosine are a way for us to um, graph waves, you know, and definitely they are connected to radio waves. Um, one of the things that they're being used for now, just in the past, well, probably 20, 30 years, is the recycling of aluminum because, well, the plants right outside of Elk River that do the recycling in order to burn electricity for the garbage. Um, for years, the aluminum just went through the garbage and went to the landfill. There was absolutely nothing you could do about it. They were using magnets to get all the steel out and get anything that had any magnetism on there. They used fans to blow all the paper out so that they could burn the paper. But the aluminum just went through. There was nothing they could do. And then, it was an enormous amount of money, but they spent an enormous amount of money on a machine that hits sound waves at the garbage. And it turns out, aluminum pings when it gets hit with sound waves. And so if you hit it hard enough, it pings up into the air and you can catch the aluminum in nets. And that's what they do. As the garbage goes through, they ping it with sound. And the aluminum cans fly up and get caught in a net. And that's how they can recycle those aluminum cans. I'm not even into that kind of That is it's just video. very cool. It's that's just very cool. Weird. You've got to look at video. So, <laughs> I'm seriously. <laughs> Visit. Visit the, it's called the uh, Resource Recovery Plant outside of Elk River. They actually give tours, but close pits. It's garbage. It's really smelly. So, uh, but very cool to see the process that they use to separate all that out. 
We're going to use theta for most of the angles that we talk about. Usually it's just Greek symbols and we kind of stick with theta um, in here. And it says cosine and sine of an angle. And this is what I was just explaining to you before. Suppose an angle in standard position has, make it, has a measure of theta, whatever that is. The cosine of that angle, and we always just use COS for the short of that, is the x-coordinate of the point at which the terminal side of the angle intersects the unit circle. So whatever we get for the cosine of this <coughs> angle is going to go right there. And then the sine is the y-coordinate. And that's really important to understanding what's going on on the unit circle. Because what that allows us to do is say, well, we know exact stuff about 30 and 60 degree angles because we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we know exact stuff about 45 degree angles. So we can give them exact answers to that. And I mentioned how important that is in math, that we can give something exact. So this says, what are the cosine and sine of theta? For theta equals 90 degrees, and theta equals negative 180 degrees, and theta equals 270 degrees. These are actually special. They are called, I'll use a capital Q here, quadrantal angles. And that's because they lie on either the x or the y axis. So what they want us to do is think, well, what's going to happen if we need to find cosine and sine for these special angles? So the first thing I do is I draw my x and y axis. And I think about my unit circle and where my unit circle would hit this stuff when I'm graphing. And I have to remember that the radius of a unit circle is 1. So I pick a point that's at 90 degrees, and that's going to be right up here. And I think about what the coordinates of that point are. Well, if it's the unit circle, that's 0, 1. And I just found the cosine and the sine of 90 degrees. Because this is the cosine and this is the sine. It's alphabetical. <coughs> C before S. So the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. And the sine of 90 degrees is 1. And I don't have to use Sokotoa to get it. I'm using that unit circle. So negative 180 degrees. Well, we actually could call it positive 180 degrees also. It's going to give us the same place. It's just the direction that's important. And that's back here. What are the coordinates of that spot on the unit circle? <coughs> negative 1, 0. We just found cosine and sine for negative 180 degrees. Cosine of negative 180 degrees is negative 1. And the sine of negative 180 degrees is 0. 270. Where's that? Straight down, right? So give me the ordered pair for our straight down here. Zero, negative one. And there's our cosine and our sine. There they are. So the unit circle, very special. Makes a lot of things easier to calculate when we are <coughs> used to using that unit circle. Because if you think about it, bless you, uh, we never talked about cosine and sine of 90 degrees before. We had special right triangles, but we focused on the 30, 60, and 45. And that's because these are unique. These are quadrantal angles. So down here it says, well, let's do this for negative 90 degrees, 360, and 540. Go ahead. We might have to talk about the 540, but go ahead and see what you can do. Those first two at least. Yeah.
to each other. Chicken wing and elbow partner if you need to about that 540. Think up till then, you're probably good. Yeah, so the moment I the 540 to make it easier for everybody. What could you tell? Yeah, remember a full rotation is 360. So this is a coterminal angle with something that we see up there. So, um, and maybe you just did that in your head right away and you got your 270, but if not, we do our 540 minus 360. And we get 180. So that means we're over here. And then you have to think, didn't we already do that one? Yeah, positive 180 and negative 180, we already did that. Not that it would be hard to do it again. I mean, we've got negative one zero here. And there it is. The toughest one for people always seems to be the 270. I said 270 earlier. I was thinking about that. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's because it's always it's something you've learned in school is the 90, 180, and it, it goes pretty easy. But the 270 for some people, it just kind of freaks them out a little bit. But uh, just remember, it goes by 90s. You can think about your 9s that you learned when you were in elementary school, and, and you can get them there. But coterminal, which we talked about yesterday, is incredibly important. If we take the 540 and we subtract the 360, we know where this will land between 0 and 360. So now, what do we want to do? We want to find exact values for some of them that we should know how to do already, which means the special ones. So we want to find exact sine and cosine values for multiples of 30 because 30, 60, etc. Yeah, exactly. So if we can find those, we have multiples that we can see. Now it says, what are the cosine and sine of the angle? I'm going to go back to our special right triangles. And remember that I have 1, square root of 3, and 2. Again, you can put an x behind each of those. It doesn't mean that every 30, 60, 90 triangle has sides of like 1, 2, square root of 3. It means that the sides are in that ratio every time. So if it bugs you that we don't have an x there, then slap an x on there. But it won't make any difference when we find the ratios because ratios are fractions. And if we put one of these over the other, the x's are going to cancel out. So if we want theta to be 60 degrees, this is where we focus. And it said, what's the cosine? Well, cosine is always going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So it would be 1x over 2x, which would be 1 half. So the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And then if we need the sine of 60 degrees, well, we're focusing on the same angle, but now we're going to do opposite over hypotenuse. And that will be the square root of 3 over 2. There we have it. Those are special angles. You know, we want to be able to know those. Then it says, how about 225? Huh. 225. Finding that angle is going to be a big part of this. Because 225, I'm thinking, well, that's not 45, 30, or 60. Why are they having me do 225? So we go back to yesterday where we're visualizing there's our initial side. And we try to figure out where would that land. Can I go all the way straight up? Farther, right? All the way across? Even farther than that. So the question is, how much farther? Can I go all the way straight down? No. So I go 180, and then there's going to be a little piece that I have to represent. What is that piece? 45 degrees. Aha. Because what we just did, <coughs> that's so hard to see there, was found a reference triangle for this. And that reference triangle, again, is always formed with the, pot, with not the positive x-axis, but the x-axis. So if this is a 45, 45, 90, then this has to be negative 1, negative 1, and 
the square root of 2 because that's how 45, 45, 90 is work. And that would be on the unit circle. So we'd have a spot here that would have a radius of that one as we went through there. Now, if we've got theta equals 225, this will have the exact same cosine and sine that we need. Even though the reference triangle that we're using has a 45 degree angle, we just use that to figure out what we have for cosine and sine. So the cosine of 225 degrees and the sine of 225 degrees are just waiting for us up here. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be negative 1 over the square root of 2. And I'm going to put that up here because I just ran out of room. And I know I can't read that because I have to rationalize the denominator. So square root of 2 over the square root of 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. And then the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Is that going to be any different than the cosine? Uh, negative 1 over the square root of 2. So negative square root of 2 over 2. And we have it. So even if it's not a 30 degree angle, if it's a multiple of the 30 degrees, we can do something with it. If it's not a 60 degree, well, if it's a multiple of that, we can do something with it. And the 45s as well. So that's what we want to be able to do. So down here, we need the cosine and sine for negative 45. All right, let's walk through that one. Trig is very visual. What does the negative do for us? Clockwise. So then I think, all right, well, then that's going to make that my little reference triangle. What do you know about the sides in a 45, 45, 90? 1, 1, square root of 2. So 1, oops, this time it's going down. Negative 1, square root of 2. So you still think about, you know, is it going left, right? Is it going up, down? Where is it going? So we need the cosine of negative 45 degrees, and we need the sine of negative 45 degrees. What would the cosine be? square root of 2 over 2. 1 over the square root of 2, then we'd have to do the exact same thing we did up here. So we realize, well, that's going to be square root of 2 over 2. How about the sign? Negative square root of 2 over 2. That's 445, just negative. 150 degrees. Straight up? How much short? 30 degrees short of a full straight line there. What do you know about the side lengths in a 30, 60, 90? 1, square root of 3, and 2. Now, the, the short side is always opposite the smallest angle. So if this is 30, that's a 1. If this is 60, this is the square root of 3. And this would be our 2. Shortest side, opposite the smallest angle. That's actually from the hinge theorem that you learned in geometry. So now if we want cosine and sine, one of these has to be made negative, right? Which one? Yep. We're going left. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What are we going to put? <coughs> Pull up the sign. One half. You have the feeling you're doing something wrong because you start seeing the repetition? You're doing something right if you start to see the repetition. Remember, we're trying to find multiples of this 30, 60 business and 45 degree business. You should see the same numbers when you do that. 
Now it says for an angle theta, can cosine theta ever equal sine theta? Wait a minute. It happened here. Yes. Why did it happen in the 45, 45, 90? The same. We have two sides. It's isosceles. Two of the sides are the same. So the answer to their little question is yes. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Definitely. Now it's going to depend on which quadrant it's in. I don't know if we can get the positive and the negatives to match, but you definitely can get those to be the same. It's, it's going to work. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go on a little bit into 13.3. Um, so important to draw these. So important to make the visual when it's something that's not popping into your head right away about what you can do. If you get used to that, then things will go very, very well for you. Because what we have to do today is start talking about radian measure. Um, you've learned degrees. Degrees are something you grew up with. But, oh, am I running out of time? Yes. There's no more? No, no. that's it. That's good. Yeah! yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Shoot. Yes. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 